okay so today i will talk about the strain energy concept okay so strain energy due to your tension or compression so till now you have learned about the stress strain concept and in the last video you have learned the stress strain diagram also okay and in this diagram you have learned that if the material that is under the action of your tensile load is within the elastic range in that case the stress strain diagram is looks like this one okay if this is the stress and this is strain the stress strain diagram under elastic condition is simply a straight line okay so this is strain and this is your stress okay so now what is strain energy now if the material let's say this is a bar that is under the action of your tensile load okay so this is the bar this is under action of a tensile load and what is the effect of that tension simply this bar elongated okay this is elongated and this is your load p and let's say the cross sectional property cross section of the bar is a the total length this is l okay length is l and modulus of elasticity is e okay so what is the deflection delta here so delta can be expressed you know that is equal p l by a e okay you have already learned all these things in previous lessons okay so simply here if we consider again this diagram here okay so instead of let's say stress we are using force and your uh, deflection okay so we are expressing this axis this is the deflection delta okay and the ordinate this is load if the material is within the elastic limit or if it follows your hooke's law simply you know that deflection delta is proportional with load from this equation so the diagram looks like this okay now consider any load let's say we are considering load p dashed okay and corresponding to this p dashed our deflection is what is let's say this is delta dashed okay this is delta dashed so this is delta dashed and this is your p dashed now you have to do a job that is increased slightly the load okay so let increase dp or delta p okay so this is your dp okay and due to this delta p load what is the increment in your deflection simply that is also this is let consider this with capital d okay otherwise it will create a confusion this is d so due to this dp load the increment in deflection is this is the increment in deflection this is simply d delta dashed okay 
so what is the energy here due to this increment of dp you can say that this is p times increment in deflection that is your d delta dash okay that is d delta dash and it is p dash so this is the energy that is stored when you increase your load and here this is expressed by this hatched area and if you simply remove this dp what will happen it will again come back the d delta dash will also be removed and the energy part will be simply removed okay so here you can see that the material is simply acting just like a spring okay which is storing your energy when you are applying load p and when when you simply remove this p the energy is released okay so what is the total energy in this case to get the total strain energy what you have to do you have to simply get the area here okay so let clear all these things so let's say a uh, total load applied here total load applied here is p okay so this is the total load here that is p and total deflection let's say this is delta okay so the total strain energy is simply the area of this triangle if this is o if this is a and if this is b the area of this triangle okay this is the total strain energy due to this total load p okay and it is given as the area of triangle o a b that is half times delta times p this is the total strain energy that is stored within this bar okay now you have two option to express this strain energy okay so let's discuss one by one okay so we have got our first equation that is strain energy u is equals with p times delta by 2 okay so from here you can see that u is a first this is a function of external p as well as function of delta okay so if we wish to express u in terms of p what we have to do we have to simply replace this delta with p and you know that delta is equal to pl by ae so our u is coming as what is this this is half times p times pl by ae which gives us half times p square l by ae okay now let's express in terms of delta okay so u uh, u is equal to with half time p times delta and we need to replace p in terms of delta so it is coming as delta times ae by l times delta or half times delta square a e by l okay so both this formula are related to the total strain energy that is stored in this bar due to the external load p okay now if i ask you what is the strain energy per unit volume okay so that's a very easy one here the total volume of this bar is some simply cross sectional area a 
times length L. So, if this is the total strain energy and we are supposed to find the strain energy per unit volume and let us denote that with small u. So, small u is simply capital U divided by AL or volume. Any problem? No. So, u is coming as if we are supposed to use this formula. In that case, it is coming as half times P square L by A E times A L. Cancel L, L and we are getting half P square divided by A square okay, times 1 by E. And from here, we are getting P by A is simply stress. So, half times stress square divided by E. Okay. So, we have one more formula that is strain energy per unit volume is given by this formula. Okay. Now, clear this picture. We do not need it anymore. Now, let us say this strain energy here u has been given as a function of stress. If we would like to express this in terms of strain, what we have to do? Simply replace this stress with strain. So, in that case, it is coming as half times stress means E times strain square by E or this is equals with uh, this is equals with half times E times epsilon square. Okay. So, this is also another formula that express the strain energy per unit volume. Okay. So, what is the maximum level of this strain energy per unit volume? Simply, you have to replace this stress by your sigma. What is that? Can you remember? Yes, limit of proportionality. So, in this diagram, in this diagram, just it is this one. Okay. So, again we are drawing the stress strain diagram from the last relation and that was something like this. Okay. So, this was stress, this is strain, okay. this is sigma and this is epsilon and our curve was like this, this was stress corresponding to your limit of proportionality then we had yield point B then we had strain hardening part this one that is ultimate stress and then the point of failure or rupture this one okay so the maximum unit energy that can be stored without violating our hook slope that is this one simply put sigma as sigma LOP okay and this gives us half times sigma LOP square times 1 by E and this energy can be expressed in this diagram this is the energy okay and as this is under the condition of elastic range or as this follows Hooke's law, if you simply remove the stress, all this energy can be get back. Okay. And this energy is known as, do you know what is that? That is known as modulus of resilience. Okay. And if you let us say you are uh, stressing the bar 
up to this point. So what is the total energy stored here per unit volume? Simply the total area up to this point, the total area and this total area is this total area is now known as modulus of toughness okay so that's all for today's lesson